this is what it shows. It shows a star surrounded by planets. Now, the, the, this, this arrow is, is my addition to uh, enable comparison with our knowledge of uh, the solar system. So we have the sun, with not the earth, we have the sun in the center, surrounded by planets, all the planets we know of in the correct sizes and in the correct order. Except that here there is one more planet, right here, between Mars and Jupiter, where the asteroid belt is now. So according to the Sumerians, there was a planet there, uh, probably, or one must conclude, the planet which apparently broke up somehow. Now, uh, if you could uh, get hold of Sumerian guy and said to him, uh, what planet was that and what is the somehow? How, how did that planet uh, break up? He'll say, well, that, that's, uh, <laughs> you're asking me something that has uh, been written about uh, in one of our books. It happens to be a clay tablet, not uh, the way we, we uh, think of books. And that tablet uh, is actually part of uh, seven tablets. And uh, once they were discovered uh, in a library in northern Mesopotamia, uh, in an ancient library in northern Mesopotamia, and it did contents of that uh, uh, story on, on those tablets uh, was, was uh, deciphered, uh, they have since been referred as the seven tablets of creation, paralleling the biblical tale of the seven days of creation, six days of actual creation, and then one day in praise of, of the Creator. <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, one of the tablets, I think uh, uh, the fourth one out of the seven, uh, known as uh, the Epic of Creation. <clears throat> Uh, or sometimes known by its uh, opening lines, which is how the Sumerians used to name their uh, epic tales or, or uh, their uh, tablets in library catalogs, because they were actually <coughs> set in, in, in libraries, and on each shelf there was a tablet that listed all the texts that are on that particular shelf, like a catalog uh, tablet. Uh, so, no, it's not sometimes known by its opening words, Enuma, Enuma Elish. <clears throat> now, what does the Enuma Elish uh, say? The Enuma Elish says, uh, tells the story how the uh, earth uh, came to be, how uh, our moon came to be, how that extra planet came to be, and indeed how the whole solar system came to be. And they say that once the solar system began to coalesce, the way our modern scientists say, around our sun, and the various planets began to form, <coughs> an invader, another planet, thrust out, some, out of some other solar system, uh, passed near ours, but as it passed near our solar system, it began to be uh, uh, pulled in by the gravita gravitational pull of all those, uh, those other planets and changed course. Now you will notice an interesting thing that while all the other planets rotate in one direction, which is uh, counterclockwise as <coughs> we, we say, <coughs> this one uh, orbits in the opposite direction uh, which, uh, uh, being unusual, is called retrograde. <laughs> but as it was drawn in, in the opposite direction, inevitably it collided with one of the olden planets in our uh, solar system, which in the Enuma Elish text is called <coughs> Tiamat. And uh, uh, this planet, the invader, uh, which later was named Nibiru, uh, acquired various 
satellites or moons as it was passing by the other planets. <laughs> Tiamat, which is treated as a female, a female celestial <coughs> entity, uh, had uh, 11, 11 satellites, one of them quite large, unusually large, uh, called in the tail Kingo. And uh, when the clash finally occurred, it referred to in those texts as the celestial battle, uh, Tiamat uh, was hit uh, twice actually, this is just one of the drawings from my books, uh, was hit by some of the moons, the satellites of the invader, and was broken up. Half of it became bits and pieces, the asteroid belt, uh, which uh, those texts, and the Bible, in chapter 1 of Genesis, refers to as the hammered bracelet, because it orbits like a bracelet around the sun, and the other half was uh, thrust into another orbit, carrying with it Tiamat's largest moon to become our planet Earth and uh, its satellite, the moon, <laughs> an unusually large one as things go in our solar system. <laughs> and now, uh, what happened to the invader? According to the Enuma uh, Elish, the epic of creation, the invader itself uh, became a member of the solar system, a twelfth member, because they counted the sun, the earth, its moon, and not nine, but ten planets. Now, on many uh, Sumerian and afterwards uh, Assyrian, Babylonian, and, and, and so on uh, depictions, uh, all the twelve members of the solar system are depicted, and uh, you can see uh, the sun, uh, you can see the moon, you can see this Nibiru, uh, whose symbol became the winged disk. Uh, you can see uh, all the others with their symbol. And you can see the seven dots, which is the symbol for Earth. Now, you may well say uh, this is wrong, because we all know that Earth in uh, New Age parlance is the third rock from the sun. Right? <coughs> So there's uh, Mercury, Venus, and Earth. <laughs> that is true. But if the Sumerian incredible knowledge uh, was given them, was not acquired by them from their own observations without telescopes and all other modern equipment, if it was given them by somebody, let's assume for the moment, coming in from outside the solar system, towards Earth, then they would say Pluto is the first. And then there's Neptune and Uranus. And then there's Saturn and Jupiter. And Mars would be the sixth planet. And Earth would be the seventh planet. So Earth is quite correctly depicted by the symbol of the seven dots, the number seven. And uh, this is something I would uh, like you to keep in mind as we <laughs> proceed with this presentation because it is uh, very significant uh, towards uh, uh, an appreciation of the evidence uh, from the past about the, the future. <clears throat> 